As someone who was on the diet roller coaster ride for three and a half decades before figuring out how to quit dieting, start living, restricting nothing, and losing over 200 pounds, I am someone who eats whatever I want, but in a more acceptable portion. It's so annoying to hear, and it's mostly a mental thing, but portion control can make a world of difference to people who do not want to quit their pizza, or their cake, or their cookies, or french fries, I could go on and on. All the things that diet culture has labeled bad. In my world, nothing is off limits, nothing is bad, it's just food. Many of us find it challenging to control our intake of enjoyable foods. We take an initial bite only to find ourselves unable to stop until we've consumed an excessive amount. Why does this happen? It's a question that a lot of people have asked themselves at one point or another, and it's a question that I'm asked a lot as well. Why do we find it so difficult to stop when we're faced with our favorite indulgent foods? The answer in part lies in the value that we attach to these foods. Food isn't just fuel for our bodies. It's deeply intertwined with our emotions and our memories, and in some cases, our, our culture. We've been conditioned from a young age to associate certain foods with pleasure and comfort and celebration. So think about your favorite childhood treats or the dishes that your family serves during the holidays. Do these foods often come with a strong emotional connection? Probably, and that just makes them more than just sustenance. They become sources of happiness and nostalgia. Advertisers and food manufacturers understand this psychological connection very well, and they capitalize on it. It's awful. They invest vast amounts of money and resources into making their products not just tasty, but pretty much irresistible. They use very clever marketing techniques to create an aura of desirability around their foods, their products that they're trying to sell. And commercials show people having the time of their lives while eating these products. And the packaging is designed to be visually appealing as well. And all of these tactics serve to elevate the perceived value of these foods. Um, another reason people struggle with portion control when it comes to fun foods is the concept of food as reward. We've been conditioned to believe that we deserve these treats after a tough day, a long week, or as a form of self-indulgence. This creates a reward system in our brains where we associate indulgent foods with a sense of accomplishment or even self-care. It's a way to cope with stress and to give ourselves a pat on the back for enduring life's challenges. That's something that was pretty common in me and layered sorry in my world, so I'm sure it happens to a lot of people. The way that our brains are wired plays a significant role. Foods high in sugar, fat, and salt can trigger the release of feel-good chemicals in our brains, such as dopamine. It's quite a bit like a drug. And this creates a pleasurable sensation that we want to experience again and again. It's a natural response that has evolved to ensure that we seek out energy dense foods in a world where calories were once scarce. But in today's environment of food abundance, this mechanism can actually lead to overconsumption. Correcting this starts with understanding the psychological and emotional aspects of our relationship with food. Recognizing the value that we've assigned to certain foods and being mindful of our emotional triggers can actually help us make more conscious choices. Instead of turning to food as a reward or an escape, we can seek healthier ways to cope with stress or celebrate all of our achievements. It's pretty essential to educate ourselves about proper portion sizes and practice portion control Learning to savor and enjoy smaller portions of our favorite treats can actually help us strike a balance between pleasure and health. It's about finding moderation in our approach. And I know that's like such a cliche thing and that people hate to hear that, but it's true. If we find moderation in approach to fun foods while we're still allowing ourselves to enjoy them without guilt or deprivation, this can actually help us in the long run. The struggle to have reasonable portions of fun foods is a complex issue rooted in our emotions, culture, and biology. 
by recognizing the value that we've assigned to these foods, understanding our emotional triggers, and practicing portion control, we can foster a healthier relationship with indulgent traits or things that maybe you have labeled bad. It's a journey that requires self-awareness and self-compassion, but it's one that can lead to a more balanced and fulfilling relationship with food. When you deprive yourself of certain foods, the voluntary, albeit unintentional, creation of scarcity has significantly elevated the overall worth of the food. And now that chocolate bar or the piece of pie is beckoning you. When, without a doubt, you indulge in it, resistance becomes futile. Why would you even try to resist? You're consuming something with such immense personal value that cessation becomes nearly impossible. So when food carries this level of significance, the emotions surrounding it become profound, I guess. This is the best word I can think of. In situations of starvation or severe thirst, food and water become rare commodities, bearing exceptionally high worth. And I assure you that once presented with them, you won't merely take a small bite or sip. You will consume them with an insatiable appetite driven by the sheer pleasure derived from partaking in such high value sustenance, leaving little room for other thoughts. Does this make sense? Have you gone through this? This underscores the importance of reevaluating your relationship with food. While it may sound negative, it simply entails equating the worth of all foods in your mind. If you find yourself compelled to consume particular foods fervently, it's essential to uncover what factors are inflating their value, such as restrictions or deprivation, like when you say, no, I can't have that, dietary rules, body image issues, and so on. So if you begin dismantling these restrictive beliefs you've attached to food, you essentially heal your connection with nourishment. and those additional traits will gradually fade into insignificance. As I have so often said over the last 10 years of my journey, thrive, don't deprive. Cheesy, I know. If you would like more information about our health and lifestyle coaching packages, message the page here or email us at info at beamehealth.ca. If any of this video today intrigued you, we do offer an overcoming emotional eating course and it is 50% off right now. There will also be a number of coaching spots uh, opening up with me in January. Thanks for watching.